State propaganda has admitted that Russia is seriously lagging behind Ukraine in the field of drone production. On Solovyov's talk show, one of the experts in the studio suddenly for the guests and the host began to praise Ukraine, which was able to create a real industry of unmanned systems with a large number of independent developers and a standardization system. Moreover, according to the Russian expert, Ukraine has become the first country in the world where a separate unit of unmanned systems forces has been created in the army. According to the guest, Ukraine has successfully established cooperation in the area of UAVs with China, which, according to the Russians, is one of Moscow's main allies. Wait, how is that possible? You told us that Ukraine is country 404, mired in poverty and corruption and about to fall apart on its own. And now, it turns out that Russia is lagging behind, even this country? How did this happen? And what did those trillion-dollar defense budgets go on? The Russian telegram channel Seattle Vetra comments on the video. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that the country is now capable of manufacturing up to 4 million drones annually, underscoring its commitment to boosting local production. Before the Russian invasion in February 2022, Ukraine had virtually no drone production. In the very difficult conditions of a full-scale war, when Russia was constantly attacking, Ukrainians managed to create a practically new defense industry, Zelensky said. Ukraine tripled its total domestic arms production in 2023 and then doubled it again in the first eight months of this year, Prime Minister Denis Shmihal announced at the same meeting. Ukrainian officials did not provide specific figures. In its 31-month war with the aggressive Russians, which has no end in sight, Ukraine is currently spending about half of its national budget on defense or about 40 billion US dollars. Ukraine also receives a great deal of military and financial support from its Western allies. Russian occupiers are trying to break through to the city of Kurokovo in the Pokrovsk district of the Donetsk region. This was stated by the representative of the press service of the 79th Separate Airborne Assault Tavry Cheskaya Brigade of Ukraine, Orest Drimalovsky. He noted that the enemy's plans were clear. After capturing Volodar, they would move on to Kurakovo. They are throwing large forces into breaking through, in particular, the defenses of the 79th Air Assault Brigade in the area of the village of Konstantinovka. In October, there were already two massive assaults, said Drimalovsky. According to him, the enemy in the Kurokovo direction is not afraid to use its equipment and attacks in columns. He noted that on October the 1st, the occupiers threw 19 armored vehicles into battle and yesterday, October the 3rd, 10 armored vehicles. Our paratroopers have effectively reduced this Russian assault to zero. Out of 10 units of equipment, our soldiers destroyed seven, a tank and six combat armored vehicles with paratroopers. 20 occupiers were killed in this attack and more than 20 were wounded. But the occupiers have obviously sensed blood and are trying to speed up their offensive. But our soldiers are doing everything to disrupt these enemy plans and inflict significant losses on them. The situation remains very tense, emphasized the representative of the press service of the 79th Air Assault Brigade. According to him, each such attack ends with the enemy losing up to 10 units of armored vehicles. This area, where Nikolaev's paratroopers are stationed, near the village of Konstantinovka in the Mariinskaya community, is in fact a graveyard of Russian armored vehicles. If you look from a bird's eye view, these are in fact hundreds of burned Russian tanks and other armored vehicles. As reported, Ukrainian military expert Alexander Musienko believes that Russian troops had an advantage in the Volodar direction, which is why the Ukrainian armed forces had to retreat. According to him, the enemy will now control the commanding heights and the Ukrainian defenders will have to retreat to the fortified lines. He noted that the enemy will probably continue the offensive further to the northwest and will move towards Kurokovo. And as military expert and employee of the security service of Ukraine, Ivan Stupak reported, Russian occupiers want to tear the Donetsk region into two parts, the so-called North and the so-called South, in order to completely occupy it.
Ukraine is making steady progress in its fight to retake Crimea a decade after Russia's Little Green Men first invaded the peninsula in 2014 and more major advances are expected later this year. Although Russian troops spent years digging in, in Crimea, turning the popular vacation spot into a military hub, special operations by the armed forces of Ukraine over the last two years have decimated the Kremlin's logistical capability and military readiness, according to a new report published by the Atlantic Council. With international attention firmly fixed on the Russian army's advances in eastern Ukraine and the Ukrainian invasion of Russia's Kursk region, it is easy to overlook important developments taking place further south in Crimea, wrote Sahi Kuzan, the chairman of Ukraine's Security and Cooperation Center and a former advisor to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. During 2024, Ukraine has achieved a number of strategic successes in and around the Russian-occupied peninsula that are worthy of closer attention and could shape the ultimate outcome of the war, he said, according to Kyiv Post media outlet. It is noted that the three main military initiatives by the armed forces of Ukraine that have weakened Russia's grip on Crimea include 1. The destruction of almost one-third of Russia's Black Sea Navy fleet using surface drones and missiles that have rendered the Russian Navy virtually ineffective. 2. The use of long-range missiles that have forced Russia to push its air defense systems back from northwestern Crimea, leaving a large part of the peninsula vulnerable to further counter-attacks. 3. The successful targeting of key logistics hubs and routes leading to the peninsula that have severely limited the ability of Moscow's forces to supply the area with essential material resources. The armed forces of Ukraine has used this three-pronged approach to push all of Russia's navy out of the Sea of Azov and limit the Kremlin's ability to stage attacks from the south, according to Kuzan. Even more, the targeting of Crimea has offended Putin, who has constantly promoted the capture of the peninsula as a major victory. The 2014 occupation of the Ukrainian peninsula is routinely portrayed in Kremlin propaganda as the greatest achievement of Vladimir Putin's entire reign and a symbol of Russia's return to great power status. Kuzan said, Putin's current inability to defend Crimea is therefore widely perceived as a personal humiliation. U.S. allies support Ukraine's efforts to repatriate Crimea, according to General Ben Hodges, a former NATO official and commanding general of U.S. forces in Europe. We could be 100% clear to the Ukrainians and the Russians that we are 100% in favor of them retaking Crimea, however they do it, Hodges told Al Jazeera. And more movement towards once again raising a blue and yellow flag on the peninsula can be expected by the end of the year, he added.